my hot take is that, um, oh God, it's going to anger so many people. The worst thing you can do is be in gaming. Gaming pays really bad CPMs. It has a super low total addressable market relative to like any other form of content. And it's super hard to grow because it's ballistically oversaturated. Zizarin, don't one guy me. How many people in this directory do you think are making meaningful income playing Path of Exile? Let me count. One, two, what? Oh, that's it. And then after that, nobody. You are literally the top 1% of the top 1% of the top 1% of the guy. Oh, gaming works for me. Dude, shut up. You have hundreds of thousands of views on your YouTube videos. Uh, XQC coming in here like, whoa, well, maybe it could work. No, like <laughs> nobody is like you. There are like, how long has Karn been streaming? DS Lily been streaming? Garatha been streaming consistently with tons of hours and never made full-time income. Much less these hosers who we don't even hear of. It, 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 no, no, no. It's it's something I've, uh, since I've come back and I've really started looking at content creators, you know what the most damaging thing for content creators is? It's this motherfucker. People that make you believe that this is not only possible, but this is like literally commonplace. Actually. And they act like it too. But the reality is that you can't use any of these people as a barometer for being content creators. Period. You just can't do it. These are literal exceptions to the rule. It sucks because there's so many hundreds of thousands of people that, that like get into the game because they want to be these types of people. The way that I would equate these people in this day and age is like the trust funds babies slash like hedge fund babies of streaming. Like the like Hassan is live a lot and I don't want to take away from that. Like Zach is like live a lot and like really consistent, but the like the production quality and the amount of effort they physically put into their content is so much lower than what is required to 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 get there. And so like it, it sets a false expectation and for some reason like we super glorify these creators, but we like we hate hedge fund people wait right like we hate like people that are low effort on the other side i don't know why we don't champion people who actually like consistently produce like really really badass content and i guess like those kind of people are being rewarded like i would say if there was anybody in live streaming right now who has come up really fast and is consistently producing like high production effort content is probably extra emily and then of course kai sanat but they're they're on a short list like it's not that many people if you want to like actually succeed you have to be creating stuff like Extra Emily is doing. You've got to be cooking steaks in parking lots outside of Denny's and shit and doing something interesting every single broadcast to like pull these kind of numbers. The reason why you can get 70% growth in this time period is because of you're doing some crazy kind of content every single time. And Zizarin is actually part of the problem of thinking that it's possible. Like nobody is going to stream Path of Exile and get to his level it, simply just because of like the, the equity, man, just the amount of effort and consistency that he's produced over so f long at this point, you've got to beat 11 years of authority. Like it's so hard. 11 years of authority. This guy looks like a meth addict in like a $10 room. And then he's talking like, oh, wow, it's like really easy to be a Path of Exile guy. <laughs> like, but then you go look at like someone like Pirate Software. He's been refining himself as an entertainer. He's been refining himself. He's been figuring out how to EQ his mic so he gets that super deep voice and so on and so on and so on. So if you want to like be these people, it is possible, but you've got to start building the equity at this level. Thor is a, is a, a master at being an entertainer at this point, right? What's kind of crazy about him, though, is that like, and then it's also too, is like, it's the equity that he put in offline. That's another thing that's like really important, right? Is that it's not just the equity that he put in with just the time in to like YouTube production and content production. It's also the skills that he learned. So for example, like the only reason I have any kind of success as a content creator is because I've literally put millions of dollars into business, advertising, marketing, things offline, skill development that I, so I know what I'm talking about. And, and, and so like, I'm pretty confident I can get a degree of success in the next, I'm pushing for a million subscribers. So I'm going to try to get a million subscribers by the end of 2025. And I'm pretty confident I can do it. We'll see. But, um, that's only going to be predicated, not only on the fact that I've been creating content since like 11 years ago. Right. And also been refining this. And I look like a meth addict, except instead of Zizarin being a meth addict in his house, I'm a meth addict in a forest. But there you have it.
With Peely as an example, is it possible a lot of the possible viewers are kind of dried up? In order for someone new to succeed in the space, would it require either new players on Peely or to increase the audience potential or some other streamer retiring? Ooh, what a good f question that is. One of the things I was going over with Ziz, I don't know if he wants me to talk about this. I think he's fine. He, knowing him, he's probably fine. Darth, microtransaction has proved PoE doesn't need to grow for a quality content credit to rise up. Interesting. That's a really good point. That, that, that might counteract what I was just about to say. Dark microtransaction is still farming a ton of Diablo 4, though. So I'd argue he's almost in a different market than PoE. Look at, like, like let's count the number of videos he's had since his last PoE video. 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay. Eight, eight, uh, 17. Yeah, this dude's, I don't think this dude's a Path of Exile content creator. So, so I would say that he has a different audience. Now, that, now he did well on PoE, you're 100% right. Zizzard and I were looking at his YouTube channel and we saw that a huge percentage of Zizzard's YouTube subscribers, like, is it 50% Ziz, are already watching, are already subscribed to the channel. Or what was the stat we saw? It's something, yeah, 50%. So it tells me that the total addressable market of Path of Exile is really already invested in the existing content creators, to Shiba's point. And it doesn't mean that you can't be a new creator and break into that audience, but it means that it's that much harder because of the established authority. Like, so for example, I guess like what I would say is like, if I want to be a person who's going to create content about how to play Path of Exile, why would anybody watch me over Zizarin? Because Zizarin has spent 10 years mastering that topic and he has so much equity. And by equity, I mean like he's like, expertise i literally mean like he's the best in the world at this right so it's so much harder to like to to to, to combine to, to to break over that because he because zizarin is like one of the content creators who he has iterated on his own stuff gotten better and better and better at it and he's created a moat and, and, and so i feel like that's the case where there's one of those premium gaming creators in almost every category, at least one of them, right? So if you were to be like the, like, that's why I think every content creator should ask themselves the question, do I have something better to say in this category than whoever is owning the category right now? So like my competitors are Alex Hormozzi and Gary Vee, right? That's like the kind of category that I own, which is like marketing, advertising, content creation, business type of stuff. I think that I have a better insight into new platforms than they do. And I think that I'm operating in a space that neither of them do in respect to new marketing ideas. And so I think I have a unique thing to say. And so I think I can create on that basis. Now that said, those people have much more equity than I do right now. But when I can, when I, when I can talk about things, I think I can continuously talk about things to the point where I may be able to equal that equity. Um, and, and we'll see how far my total addressable market goes, but I might, like, Alex is not that huge in the in the grand scheme of things. Like, he's made a lot of stuff, and Alex, for, for reference, spends $40,000 a month on content, and I spend about 2500 right now. So, so like, he's coming in at 2.7 million subscribers for 3,000 videos, and he's averaging, like, 100 to 200K. This viewer, at this number, like, in the finance category, means that like each one of these videos is producing like 2000 to 3000 ish dollars 4000 ish dollars maybe this is we have to watch this whole video by the way he 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 like did a bunch of social media platform stuff we're going to watch that on stream probably next time so um do i think this is possible for me to hit yeah but that's the assessment that's the calculus that i'm running as a content creator and i feel like way more people like way too many people are going to get into content creation they're like oh yeah i'm going to be a league of legends streamer but they've never run any of the any of the like talking points that i'm bringing up right now. Alex specifically said he'd rather make more niche videos because they convert better rather than videos to get 1 million plus views. I know. And he said that because his monetization strategy isn't YouTube, right? Just like mine. So like the way that he makes money is through school and through acquisition.com. Just like the way that I make money is through Novo. So I, so both of us can make that decision, but bo bo both of us are going to make that decision, right? Like I'm going to do the same thing. I want to make more like niche content that I think appeals to specific people and helps them rather than making like broad spectrum business stuff that would then sort of lose the message because it has to be diluted. Okay, so what's back to the concept that we were talking about before? I just don't know if gaming as a whole, if there's like any category of gaming that's not saturated in some way with some content creator, unless you're willing to like all in on that game 
and really, really try to produce a ton of content and make like, like, look at this. Like this is 1.5 thousand videos just about Path of Exile. And like Zizarin likewise is like at 2.7 thousand videos. This is a huge investment in content creation over one game. And I would say that if you want to succeed in one game, this is what it takes, right? If, if you want to be like a super, super authority on a single game. And so the, the vast majority of gaming creators that I talk to and that make games, they want to get that level of success, but they want to jump around to other games. Like let's, let's take, uh, yeah. So let's talk about a brand new game. Let's take Throne and Liberty. And you want to be a Throne and Liberty content creator. You might be able to get started now, but it's going to take you like two to 300 videos to like really become an authority on that. And then what happens if the game dies? Like it did in Korea. And like you're so, so, so this is my problem with gaming influencers. Like you're totally beholden to the game's success. Number one, which is, which is a huge problem. Like your entire business model relies on the game success. And number two, you have to be insane enough to love that game to the extent that you can produce 200 videos about it. All of the people these days that are like variety and they're attached to gaming, like I don't think that Asmongold is a gaming influencer at all. And like, if you don't believe me, let's go look at like, what does YouTube videos do? Asmongold is a drama slash news influencer that plays video games. So not about gaming, not about gaming, not about P. Diddy, what happened to TV shows, P. Diddy again, Doc Works situation, actual game does half as well as his other videos because it's 200K versus 600K, Unreal Engine, which is about news, finally some good news, which is about news, the Cougar epidemic, young men dating older women, 120 new victims, another P. Diddy video, <laughs> right? Like... Th this is a news influencer who plays video games. The fact that people say that Zach is a gamer influencer is crazy to me, right? Let's do Moist Critical. Same thing. Most embarrassing movie of the year. Joker 2 is a fa it, it sucks. Nintendo might sue me. P. Diddy. <laughs> uh, who knows what this is about? Might be gaming, actually. Nintendo is being evil. Sony hates Bloodborne. Delusional AI artists. Um, is there anything worth watching right now? Right? Like the vast majority of, again, this is a guy who makes news and drama videos and plays video games. This would like, this would be like saying that I'm a gaming influencer. I play a shit ton of video games, but I don't, I, I, I don't like nothing that I cover is about it. Right? So the point is like, we use these people as the gold standard of like how, where a gaming influencer can go in terms of their success. And yet none of these people are gaming influencers. XQC is the same thing, right? Like Hassan Abi is like the same thing. None of these people are actually gaming influencers. So all that is to say that I just don't think that the vast majority of people are set up to be gaming influencers because how many people are willing to like, like fuck the 2000 or 3000 videos that, that Zizarin has made. How many of them are willing to even make 300 videos about the same thing? 300 videos is a crazy amount of videos right? 3,000 is an unimaginable amount of videos. But for my channel, I have been making videos. I have 356 videos. A lot of those are shorts now. So really it's like, it looks more like 200 videos or something like that. And I feel like I've made a load of videos. And am I willing to talk about marketing for another 700 videos? You bet your ass I'm willing to. But once you get down into here, like this other stuff is like weird This is a lot of work, dog. So I think that just the vast majority of people are not ready for what it takes to be a gaming influencer.